There are three apps I could not run this channel without. They're powerful, they're reliable, and today I'm gonna to share them with you. Hello and welcome back to Marco's Reviews and thank you for subscribing if you have, and if you haven't subscribed, just hit that button. It's taken me quite a while to find a bunch of productivity apps that really help me run this business efficiently, but I have done that and I'll link to a video above where I go into that in more detail. But what about the big stuff? What about the apps that I use to edit these videos, produce the audio, and edit the images that you see in the thumbnails? Well, that comes down to three apps that are completely welded into my creative process. And if you run your own YouTube channel, or if you're just curious to see what goes on behind the scenes at this channel, then I think you're gonna find this video pretty interesting. Before I get onto my three favorite power apps, there is one app that I rely on pretty much every week actually to make sure my Macs are as clean as they should be. It's called Cleaner One Pro and it's provided by Trend Micro who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Now when I first got my M1 24 inch iMac, after a couple of weeks of use, I ran Cleaner One Pro on it and it immediately found about two gig of completely useless unused files. And that's what Cleaner One Pro is all about. It sniffs out those big collections of files or big single files that you don't know are there, but which are taking up valuable space. For someone like me who works with a lot of video files, it's absolutely indispensable. There's a big file section, for example, which will give me a view of the largest files on my Mac so I can delete them straight away. There's even a duplicates photo tool where you can look at all the photos you've got on your Mac and it will show you the exact duplicates, which happens all the time. I take multiple photos of the same thing by mistake quite often and just knowing that I can grab them and delete all the duplicates is really, really satisfying. It does loads more stuff as well. So it's got a disk map where you can easily see what's in specific files folders. There's a startup manager that's very useful if your Mac is slow starting up. There's a great app management tool as well, which enables you to completely remove apps from your Mac. That's something which macOS doesn't do very well itself. So it's just nice to have that tool built into Cleaner One Pro. And there's even a toolbar at the top where you can look at your CPU performance. You can do a quick clean, quick scan of big files. Cleaner One Pro has just got everything you need to keep your Mac clean. It is simply brilliant. I only ever feature products on this channel that I use myself and Cleaner One Pro is just an essential tool for me. So to find out more, click the link for Cleaner One Pro in the description and thank you again to Trend Micro for sponsoring this video. The first power tool that I rely on probably more than any other is Final Cut Pro. If you don't know, Final Cut Pro is Apple's video editing software and it's the, to be fair, I've not used anything else. I've not used Adobe Premiere. I've always used Final Cut Pro. And my advice with this is if you find a tool like this, if it's a creative tool where it helps you edit videos or audio, whatever it might be, and if it works for you, and if you build a process around it and a workflow around it, just stick with it. It takes much longer to relearn other software. So that's always been my mantra with this. But Final Cut Pro is just, it's essential. I could not run this business without it. You would not be watching this video without it. One of the most common questions I get asked as a YouTuber is what takes up most of your time? And it is without question, the editing process. There's a really good reason for this, which is the fact that the edit is where, it's where the magic happens. I hate that phrase, but it is where the story comes together. So at the moment I'm sitting here rambling on in front of a camera. You don't see all of the terrible takes, all of the mistakes I make, all of the things I accidentally knock off the desk, all the stuff that does not need to be in that final edit, you don't get to see because it goes through Final Cut Pro and I spend a good amount of time editing out the rubbish, basically. And because of that, I need a tool that helps me do that very quickly. And Final Cut Pro, well actually it's the combination of Final Cut Pro, my 16 inch MacBook Pro, and the brilliant MX Master 3 mouse. If you haven't got one of those and you're editing videos, just get yourself one. It's not cheap, but it's worth the investment. And obviously I will put a link in the description. But I also need an editing tool that can deal with the footage properly. So I use a Sony FX3 camera. It shoots at 4K, 422, 10 bit color. It's quite chunky footage. So I need a tool that can deal with that very efficiently. And Final Cut Pro, when combined with an M1 Mac, is just lightning fast. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So Final Cut Pro, for instance, isn't cross-platform. You have to have a Mac to use Final Cut Pro. And it also chews through disk space. And by that, I mean the main library file in Final Cut Pro where all your stuff goes into it, that seems to get ridiculously big and just a, a very annoying to deal with. For me, Final Cut Pro just has the right combination of speed, Mac compatibility, and 
I suppose that's it really. Those things for me just work. And the fact that I've built this workflow around Final Cut Pro just makes it such an easy job to edit A roll, to add B roll, to do all the stuff that I need to do to make sure this video ends up in front of your eyes. It's also why I've recently launched a Skillshare class where I reveal what those tricks and secrets and things are that I put into my editing process. I'll link to that in the description. You can get a free trial of Skillshare. You can do my course, leave Skillshare without paying for it. It's really worth the, the effort, to be honest. So so click that link in the description and find out exactly how I use Final Cut Pro to make these videos. My next pro app of choice is Logic Pro and for the uninitiated that is a music production suite or a DAW, a digital audio workstation. You can use it to produce music, podcasts, audio like I do for this channel. And I've actually got quite a long history with Logic Pro because I've been a bedroom music producer since about the age of 12. And although I've used things like Cubase and I've kind of flirted with Ableton, Logic Pro has always been the tool that I've gone back to for my audio and music making duties. Again, a little bit like Final Cut Pro, there are lots and lots of options out there when it comes to audio editing. But for me, Logic Pro just works. Now these days, unfortunately, I don't get to make as much music as I used to. I'm going to try and get back into that whenever I can. So Logic Pro for me at the moment is a tool purely for these videos. Oh, and the podcast, the 8 or 16 podcast, which I'll link to in the description. When it comes to videos, I use Logic Pro to produce the audio for the mic. I made a video a little while ago, which I'll link to above, where I talk about how I use Logic's stock plugins to make this mic sound. I also use Logic Pro to produce music for this channel myself. Now, there's not much music on this channel, admittedly, but there is things here and there, and there is an ident at the start and at the end of the videos, which is this. Now that is part of a longer track, which I might share at some stage, but that was produced in Logic Pro. And Logic Pro won't be for everyone. For example, GarageBand might be a better option if you don't want all the bells and whistles that come with Logic Pro. But for me, it feels like a really comfortable pair of old slippers. I love it. I love the fact they are developing it and making some nice changes to it. For example, they've implemented certain kind of Ableton-like beat making features and looping and stuff, which is really cool to play around with and, and jam around with, but it's still, a, it's hard, it's still Logic Pro. It's still that long timeline that I'm used to. And like I say, I can just pick it up and start using it straight away, just like Final Cut Pro. Last but not least, my third power app of choice is Lightroom. Now, along with the video and audio that you're watching and listening to now, I also produce all of the images for this brand. So whether or not it's for the thumbnails for these videos, the header images for my blogs, or the kind of product shots and things that I put into the blogs, all of that is taken by myself with a professional camera. And I actually stuck with Lightroom Classic right up until I think midway through last year. And that was, again, because I was so familiar with it. But the reasons that I switched to the new version of Lightroom, there were two reasons actually. The first one is that it integrates Integrates perfectly with Creative Cloud, as you would guess, and you get store. Okay, you pay for it, but you get a, an amount of storage. I think I have one terabyte, which means all of my photos, all the original raw files, are stored on the Adobe Cloud. So basically, I can start editing a photo on my MacBook Pro, and then pick up an iPad and finish it off later on on the couch. That is really, really useful. And the second reason for switching to the latest version of Lightroom is that fantastic iPad app, which I use on my iPad mini even, but also the iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch version, and also the iPad Air 4. And I've just found that the combination of that fantastic iPad screen, but also the Apple Pencil 2, makes for a fantastic photo editing experience. And lastly, I shouldn't say this, touch wood, Lightroom does not crash on me. It is one of the most stable platforms that I use. And that is a big, big deal if you're creating lots of content like I do. And and because I've, again, built a very specific workflow around editing my photos, I can just get things done super quick. So as always, I'd like to hear from you. Let me know in the comments if there are any apps in those three categories that I should be looking at that aren't Lightroom, Logic Pro, or Final Cut Pro. Let me know in the comments. If you've still got some time, keep watching for a recent video I made where I talk about my four favorite must-have menu bar apps for macOS. But until next time, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.